Okay, so if you want to do any kind of welding whatsoever, your main goal is always to establish some kind of equilibrium between the wire feed speed and that voltage setting. So in this case, I have my wire feed speed set at 202 inches per minute and my volts at 20. And this is what an equilibrium sounds like between the melt off and uh, or burn off, basically. So. relative to a lower voltage setting. So let's say wire feed speed is all the way up to 700 inches per minute with a volt setting of 19. Essentially, it kind of influences the arc size in the sense that you have so much wire going into the weld zone, but the arc is so small, it doesn't really melt the wire fast enough to blend into the parent material. And that's the effect is that sort of stubbing effect. Similarly, you can go on the opposite side of the spectrum and you would get this kind of an effect. So an arc is generated, but then your wire feed speed isn't really fast enough to keep up with how that wire gets melted off. So that's now that being said, Sometimes the manufacturers actually provide you with uh, little tables uh, and that can actually serve as a baseline for achieving that equilibrium. So in my case, I have 035 wire in the machine and I have straight CO2 and then they give you these numbers here, these values that you can apply to your wire feed speed and your voltage. Okay, so let's talk about electrode stick out because that can have, it's a minor, maybe it's a major detail, but you know, it can actually have some effect on your ability to weld uh, in terms of depositing a nice bead anyways. But when it comes to comparing flux core with solid wire, your stick out for flux core is generally three eighths of an inch to three quarters of an inch. And solid wire is generally a quarter inch stick out to half of an inch of a stick out. So, not a big deal. That's all good. But then sometimes you want to compare the size of the nozzle relative to the joint that you're welding. Uh, generally speaking, when it comes to welding flux core, uh, you're not really weaving that puddle. You're more or less dragging in a flat or horizontal position, at least in this shop anyways. That's what we typically do. Um, with that being said, you're not really too worried about how big that nozzle is relative to the included joint. Um, but if you're going to try and weave, uh, your puddle, uh, with solid wire, you'd probably have some kind of a limitation with how well you can weave, uh, because you'll notice that the, uh, nozzle tends to touch the, uh, edges of the uh, plates. So you can get away with using a nozzle this size if let's say you're using, uh, if you're welding on a, a butt joint such as this one, right, where you have like two plates made it up. The reason why you'd be interested in oscillating the arc once again for solid wire is because the arc itself is generally fairly cool. The arc is obviously hot, but when you want to compare the temperature or arc size between flux core and solid wire, you would generally say that, you know, this arc is a little cooler, therefore you use it for thinner material. Um, that being said, you can get away with oscillating the arc or weaving that arc in the flat position, uh, just because you don't really have any obstructions between, um, you know, this nozzle. In addition, joint like this one like a, a minor flare groove weld uh, technically you can get away with just dragging the torch in a, you know in that position 
or you can also weave it a little bit to concentrate the heat. However, if you try to weave or oscillate that arc, you kind of run into that problem of, you know, that nozzle once again touching the edges of the joint. So if you're going to compare nozzles, well, obviously this one's tapered, but then you would notice the uh, contact tube is also, you know, the contact tube is recessed inside the nozzle uh, by a quarter inch anyway, similar to the other uh, setup there. But you still have a half inch of wire stick out, which is generally the maximum uh, stick out for solid wire. But that being said, it actually gives you some wiggle room for oscillating the arc, right? Uh, and, and that's really the point actually, because again, the arc is cooler and sometimes a welder might be more interested in concentrating a little more heat into the weld zone. That's why you oscillate because you're allowing that arc to basically push that puddle and allow it to wet into the parent material, right? I mean, the arc is really just there to melt into the parent material. The wire naturally melts anyways, but you're really just using that arc to um, dig into the parent material to create that fusion. And so that's sort of a little takeaway when it comes to stick out is sometimes you can actually, once again, get away with using something like this if you're just simply dragging the torch along. However, if you, uh, you know, wanted to achieve a little more better penetration by weaving or oscillating the arc, then you'd probably be a little more interested in using a tapered nozzle such as this. So wire stick out, in this case, we'll just say it's about 3 eighths. And here's an example. So the whole premise of this video section is really just to display the effects of an increased wire stick out. Ideally, when it comes to short circuit uh, transfer for MIG welding, uh, your wire stick out should be around the half inch mark. Um, if you increase the stick out to something greater than that, then you're going to find the arc becomes a little more unstable. Uh, you're going to actually decrease the amount of current or amperage going into the weld zone and therefore your penetration is less. And on the other side of the spectrum, if your wire stick out is too short, then you're probably going to be blocking your view of the weld zone with that nozzle being in the way. But you're also going to find more spatter buildup in the nozzle. Uh, it's possible for your contact tube to wear out faster due to the heat input. So essentially what you look for in welding is the puddle infill. And that's basically the width of the puddle as wire is being fed in. Now notice how the camera shows the arc is basically a really bright light. But if you look above and below the arc, you would actually see the reflection of the actual arc size. So bear in mind that the very edge of that arc is going to be touching the very edge of the toes. It doesn't really go past the toe of that wall because then you're actually going to get a wider bead. So that's something to bear in mind. So your arc is always going to be the hottest part of the wall zone and therefore when it's on the leading edge of your puddle it's more likely going to be in contact with the parent material. And in doing so, you're actually going to be creating the circumstance of better fusion. Because um, again, that arc is really just there to dig into that base material. And once again, as mentioned before, the wire is just going to naturally melt. 
and is really just there to create a uh, sort of blend or tie-in into the material. So that's the whole idea. Now pushing the puddle is okay if you're welding on maybe thinner materials and you don't want to risk burning through. And in that case, if the arc is sitting directly on top of the puddle, then not as much heat is actually going into the parent material. So there's always an application for using that arc with specific circumstances. So generally in welding, we all strive to match a textbook model for what your fillet weld should look like. And ideally, you want a fillet weld to have equal leg lengths. That is, the horizontal and vertical leg of the weld should be of equal lengths. Uh, the toes of the weld should blend in nicely with the parent material without any kind of signs of undercut or cold lap or what have you. And in addition, the face of the weld shouldn't be bulging or protruding out, nor should it have a concave appearance. So ultimately what you're trying to look for, again, is a continuity of appearance. So here we are at the end of the video. Uh, if you made it this far, then I'm hoping that the content has been helpful for your own learning. Uh, if you have any kind of questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. To my subscribers, thank you. I appreciate your support. Uh, I'll try and get uh, more videos out to you shortly. Take care. Bye-bye.